Hello everyone. Today is a great day because we are back in 2022 with our little MMORPG. Currently we are working on the, the quest system. At least we will finish it today together. You already see in the background that our NPC Hans now has a quest marker and we will discover today how the quest marker works and how finishing quest works in the last video we were able already to accept quests but we weren't able to finish them and now we will be able to finish quests and quests will have certain criteria and everything and let me show you gameplay wise first what we will implement or what we, we implemented now so the backend is already started i register a new new account because the other accounts have already been played with with the one quest as we have but we register just a new one take some eyes maybe those and orange so we are in game and we have a selection marker oh i get a daily lock-in bonus we have a selection marker which shows which NPC we will talk to, which is the green dot. And we see a gray quest marker. A gray quest marker means this NPC has a quest for us, but we don't fulfill the criteria for the quest. In this case, the reason for that is that the quest is for level 2 and we are level 1. So when we talk with the NPC, we see two graphs. We can say fine and talk a little bit with the NPC and we can also discover the other graph in of the NPC. So let's go down a little bit to our flowers and let, let's grind real fast to level 2. Shouldn't be too much work. Already halfway through the game. So now we have a little issue because we have no way to get back up there. Our level design is just bad. But we currently have nine flowers. And if I keep running and just go to the scene editor, then you see that the question mark, the, the marker gets orange, so the quest is available. Let's relock, then we start at the top. We definitely need to build something to come back up again, but for now, let's work with that this way. So the, the quest marker is orange, so Hans has a quest now. We can ask him if he has work for us, and he will give us a quest, and we could accept the quest, and we need to collect nine flowers and we just have uh, so we need to collect ten flowers but we have nine so let's go down there again i should have collected ten already but i wanted to show you uh, that the, he has a great question mark now because the quest is running but not finished and when i collected the uh, enough flowers then the question mark will turn orange same issue we need to get back up there we could also because we are in the unity editor we could also cheat a little bit but still this is fine now we see the question mark we have finished the quest and we can give the npc the flowers and this will finish the quest, which gives us a, a bunch of experience points, way too much. We lose the 10 flowers and we get 100 gold. First of all, how do we configure everything? This was covered in previous videos, but let's just fast recap. We have this quest editor where we can edit quests, and this is the quest we're currently doing. It is level 2, it doesn't have a pre-quest with a pre-quest we can create a quest series where a player has to do a and then after that he has to do b and c and so on we can do that with pre-quest and the quest has a name 
and it has a task. In our case, the task just says collect 10 flowers. This quest is saved in streaming assets. The reason for that is that streaming asset is a special folder in Unity where you can load from the file system data. And this is saved in JSON. The reason we don't use the default Unity serialization stuff is that we want to leverage this data also in the backend. So JSON is the common ground here, which makes it easy to load it in Unity and also easy to load it in the backend. So the UI for the NPC works like that. We have this behavior graph, which we created way earlier. So we have to go some videos back to find it. And this behavior graph has our own scripting language attached to it. And our scripting language, we created functionality for quest is available. So if the quest is available, then we see the option, do you have any work for me? And if we follow the path with do you have any work for me, there's a backend called quest accept. Obviously, the backend will also check for malicious a client input. So even if the client hacks this value in, the backend will still re reject it and everything. The same goes for is quest finished and we can give him the flowers and then the quest will be finished. And also here the backend rechecks if that is the case. So we can build with this graph UIs and can have multiple quests for, for an NPC and everything. And we can make one NPC has quest available, which gives you the quest, and another NPC has is quest finished, which will fulfill the quest and everything. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. A quest is available when you never have finished a quest and when the quest is currently not in your quest log and you you have the criteria level and everything. The next thing we will do in the next video will be daily quest, which is quite easy to implement with this because the only thing we need to do is make a quest unfinished every day. So. Let's say every time at zero o'clock we reset, we remove from the quest tracking system that the quest is finished and it, it will be available again for the client. So the quest marker is really simple currently. We, we have those images attached to it. And if we look at the quell code desk, you can configure a list which quests will be tracked and then we recheck for, for each quest. Do we have a finished quest? If that's the case, then we show the finished quest icon, which even if we have more quests the player could take, finished quest will be the icon to show. And if that's not the case, then we will check if not new quests are available. If that's not the case, we check if the quest is running. And if that's not the case, we check uh, if a quest is available, but the criteria of the player, for example, the level is not high enough. That's the, the gray, the gray icon we saw. And if none of those apply, then we just show nothing. That's basically how the whole unity side works. And then we have our backend scripting language with, with now the features to give is quest finished and finish quest, which finish quest just calls the backend with with a finish quest message and is quest finished basically just checks the criteria of if the task is fulfilled or not. And on backend side, we, we didn't need to do too much. The, the one of the biggest problems on backend side is Sometimes in database we were using as player ID the email address and sometimes we were using the character name and I refactored that to use always the character name so that 
in the future when we have one email address assigned to multiple characters for example we want players to be able to create strings or everything it makes sense to have everything according to the character name that was kind of a lot of refactoring but but not too much but for the quest system we have the quest it has now a function is available which which checks if the quest is available so it's really easy the player level needs to be high enough the pre-quest needs to be done if there is any and the, the quest can't be finished or can't be in the quest log currently and if none of those applies then the quest is actually available and if we go to the quest workflow which is here in the quest service you see that we load the json files in here we have to reference those but there, there's no clean other way to do that but uh, that shouldn't be a big deal every, every time we update the quest we, we create a new one we also have to add it here but that's fine and then we have which is new the finish quest and finish quest just works we check first of all if the quest exists so that uh, the client doesn't send us finish quest for any quest that isn't even in our game and then we we check if the quest is accepted if it's not accepted then we do nothing basically and then we need to do something which is new for us we need to lock our inventory system our inventory system works with an event sourcing queue and the problem with that is it could happen that the, the somehow somehow even do cheating or through other methods the the player is removing multiple items from his inventory and because of the delayed execution and latency be behind the, the processing in an event store system we never know if if there are new events that we haven't processed now so there could be a, a flying event with remove 10 flowers from the inventory of the player and since our quest now checks if the player has 10 flowers it could say that the player has 10 flowers where indeed the player doesn't have the 10 flowers anymore because they actually got removed by one what another request from another service so we could have several race conditions here an easy fix for that is to create a lease management system and that's what we did here so that we can say no one is allowed to create any more events for this inventory for a short period of time here we block it for a maximum of one minute which is quite a lot of time but we will free the lease way earlier when we are done with our work and every time we remove items from the inventory we will use this lease system when we add items it shouldn't be a big deal because when we want to remove 10 flowers and the player somehow gets five flowers more but the inventory isn't processed yet then that's no big deal because if it isn't processed then the client doesn't show the five flowers anyway so the, the, the player doesn't know he has those five flowers so how can he finish a quest when he doesn't have enough so in our system currently we just need to get this lease when we want to remove items so that's what we do and if there is a problem we can't get the lease for example uh, some other system has the lease then we will just cancel our execution and not finish the quest this should never happen and if it happens then the player needs to just send in the quest again he doesn't lose anything everything is fine basically then we check the if we got the lease which should be the case always then we get the quest and we ask the quest uh, we get the inventory of our player and then we check if the quest is finished this is basically the same check the, 
the front end in Unity does to, to show the icon for the player. And then we give the player the rewards and then we remove uh, the quest from accepted quest and add the quest to a finished quest. And after that we free the, the lease again. And then we send the, the update back to the client basically. There is a new functionality in the quest where we get the remove items, which should be in give rewards. So give rewards gets all inventory tasks because inventory tasks are those that we, where we remove the data from, uh, remove the 10 flowers from the inventory. Those are all inventory tasks. There could be multiple ones. We could make quests where the player needs to hand in 10 flowers and five coins or something like that. And here will be a list of inventory tasks. But since it's finished already checked that the player has enough, it should be fine. Then we give the player the rewards and we made a little shortcut here. XP is not a valid item ID, but to make configuration easier we have it in there so we get first of all xp rewards and then we give the um, xp amount that the player will get and then we get every other award reward that is not xp and give the player the the stuff in the inventory and then we remove the inventory tasks from the player so first we give them stuff and then we remove so if anything the server crashes or something they more likely get more stuff than we remove more stuff so this, this is always best practice to give the player more if, if something bad happens then remove it this this could be prone to exploitation later but we will make sure that this won't happen too much So then we remove the items and, and the quest is basically finished. We, we save the, the quest in finished quest and with that the, the player can't do the quest again. This is all we did for backend side basically. And this is all I have for you today and I wish you all a great week and sorry for the for the short period of time where there were no video releases but Christmas and New Year Eve kind of were some troublesome for me. Also, I started a lot of new projects in my life. These took way more time than I initially expected. So sorry again that there wasn't a video for every week, but for now we will get things started again and I will make a video every week and hope you I will see you on my channel every week. Like always I want to from the bottom of my heart thank my Patreon Julian for supporting this channel. Have a good day. Bye.